good. Why are you? Why are you so good? Because I am good. <laughs> That's their snare drum, 1978. This thing made everything else sound like the past. <laughs> Welcome to Dr. Mix. It is that time when I get to talk about the Kraftwerk Man Machine. Or Man Machine. Machine, because it's German. It's a German band. Of course it is. Of course you've seen this everywhere. This is so iconic. This is such a seminal record. It. Yeah, it changed my life. It did! And now I'm going to talk about it a lot, because there are so many things to learn from this record. So grab your popcorn, because this is going to get deep. That's right. Speaking of deep, have you subscribed to this channel yet? <gasps> no. <gasps> Come on, you can do it. Go. Yes. And that notification bell? Yes. Congratulations. Also, thumbs up, because it's free and helps me a lot. Thank you. Let's put this on. So firstly, this is my good copy, because I got two copies. My original copy is this. I was uh, six when I got it, because this is 1978. This time I got the date, right? So I, I used to personalize it. Yeah, oh, man, look at the cover, man. Look at this. What is it, like Russian propaganda meets Bauhaus? I have not even idea what this is, but this is so iconic. And inside, what do you see? Huh. Not only the record, but look what they had at the time. Just a little something for us nerds. Huh? Huh? Man! Check out. This was just, just visually speaking, was completely mind-blowing. They showed up on TV dressed up as robots. And, you know, for a six-year-old, you know, I lost my mind. So let's go straight into song number one, which is, of course, The Robots, which I have uh, reproduced on this channel before. I'm sure you've seen, you've seen the video. If you haven't, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. And let's start with the beginning. Sorry. <laughs> there is so much to break down right there. So the main component obviously is the baseline synth. This is my resonance, all right? When I pull it down, of course, I get a deeper sound. Right? But when I want it to resonate, I lose a little bit of the bottom. Okay? But what happens at that level of resonance is that there is almost like a note. Let me emphasize it more. See how basically at this level, I mean, if I go all the way up, it would be literally like a resonant frequency on its own. But if I put just enough of it, it will start sort of enhancing the harmonics and sort of whistle. Having this filter right at that setting allows you to do what the Kraftwerk are doing there. In fact, the harmonic that it, that it touches is that major third. Can you hear that? 
Oh no. It feels like maybe it's on more than one octave. So it's the masterful use of resonance, which basically gives you a melody within the bass line. But you see, I mean, it's like you hear that stuff for the first time and you don't really realize what's going on, but that's what's going on. They're playing as well as the notes, as well as the main oscillator, they're also playing the filter. And my, my take is that they have auto automatic ties like sequence the bass and they're just playing with that frequency control the cutoff and it's not coincidence it ends up on a <laughs> which is exactly the root right There is another component to the sound, which is the clicking, all right? Now, the clicking part of it, please keep it in mind because it will, we will talk about it later on because the use of clicks is pretty much the most revolutionary aspect of their music, I think. Have you noticed that there is like a... That there is with it, I mean... It, it's just, you know, I don't, I don't want to use an envelope to, to do this, otherwise it sounds, so, starts sounding like a bird, right? So there is, there is no envelope to this. There is another sound that goes... Very quick click. Listen to it. It's like a typewriter. Do you hear that? Right, this thing is incredibly sharp. I, you know, it's 1978, all right? So, so you have to imagine that at that time, the most daring uh, electronic disco, which made no mistakes, the craft wanted to go down that route. Definitely they wanted, they liked it, you know, they, they were contemporary of um, Giorgio Moroder, they were into it, they were into the disco thing. This electronic sounding disco at the time would sound something like this. Capricorn. And then it would have... Alright, now check out the transients of this thing, okay? It's like... Pretty strong transients. Let's, let's go to another uh, point of it. The transients are relatively soft, if you really think about it. If you compare it to this... Can, do you realize that every transient of this record... Even like playing it like so, so slow... It means, check out. That's their snare drum. Nineteen seventy-eight. This thing sounded so full of transients that made everything else sound like the past. <laughs> it's like, okay, I've just started this video. I'm just stuck at, you know, at, <laughs> what is it? So granular, I'm not gonna go too granular. No, I am gonna go granular because you know what? This stuff is important because when I did analyze it 
you know, over and over again, over the years. And every time I would find something like stupidly innovative, like this, you know, like hunting for. This is a normal transient, like other records. But that, <laughs> that's out of the world. Okay, all right. All right, let's keep going. All right, drums. So obviously, super mechanical drums. But along with that, there is what I believe is a vocoder, vocoded version of that, that snare drum. It's, it's like it's kind of triggering a vocoder. There is definitely some vocoder action besides the, the vocoder that's on top of it. Alright, let's analyze the music now. Alright? Now, the way the craft work craft their songs is unlike nobody else because they slide in a big mass of classical music. They had flutes, you know, before becoming this electronic, you know, they, they had been around for quite a while and they had an evolution. So, but they definitely were coming from a place of classical music and equally they weren't afraid of parallel harmony. I'm gonna jazz it up so that you understand what they actually did, all right? D minor. Now they are going a major third down. Now we are in B flat minor. And again, now it's a minor third down, we are in G minor. And now we're gonna go to the verse again. D minor. which means I'm your robot, I'm your slave in Russian. Call, response, response. You know, this, these are, these are classic, classic elements of music. I'm sorry, vinyl, especially old one does that. Where is, where are you, speck of dust? There. Okay, I'm gonna jazz it up. A. <laughs> Sus 11. Right, so harmonically, they go on a very strong, very odd, very jazzy way, but they don't take it from a jazz side. They're, they're not coming from a jazz side. I'm coming from the jazz side. But it's so easy to see the beauty, you know. D minor, B flat minor, uh, 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 G minor. And then sometimes it just gives us this five. 
All right, so <laughs> we can break free of song number one, which obviously is named The Robots. Now we have Space Lab. Space Lab is the station, I think, that was from the 60s that was put up in space. It was basically the grandma of the space station. It looked amazing. I used to listen to this track and look at this picture of the Space Lab. They closed the door of the Space Lab. There you go. And it starts. I mean, so far so good, right? So, this is a exotonal scale. And they start running the sequence so fast. Let's listen to it one more time. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Exotonal. The delay stays at the same tempo, but they're increasing the speed of the sequencer. And now... Moby, hello. <laughs> Everyone has been influenced by this stuff. Now you can hear that click even more. Like now it's protagonist. That clicking has probably, what is it? A flanger, phaser, is that what it is? Tell me what you think it is in, 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 in the comments. <laughs> you know, I, I, this is just what I'm hearing and I may be wrong. But on a couple of things, I'm really, really sure, also because I'm going to demonstrate them. J Bear with me. With that clicking going. It's not a filter, it's kind of... It's a phaser, isn't it? Drums. Strings. Minimal. Okay. They are always using that filter at a resonance and just playing with it to the point that sometimes, by mistake, they get in, in their melodies. Check out. <laughs> to be precise. Check that out. All of these inside melodies that are in this sounds are virtue of the way they have set up those filters and the resonance of those filters. This is not a small thing. It means that they intentionally control the resonance of the harmonics in order to come up with inside melodies that are within the sound itself. Yeah. These sounds are obviously made just attack. You know, there's not much to them, you know. Oh, sorry. And again, they're moving parallel. Major chord F, major chord A flat, major chord B. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but it's interesting, right? So if you... See, I usually touch the resonance in order to hear where I am with that modulation. So then I put, turn it down. Maybe make it a bit faster.
right? And then that is like um, that is a monophonic synth with a with a glider. Oh, see, that was the glissando. Very, very simple, very effective melodies, very futuristic. If you did it with an orchestra, it could be Ennio Morricone, couldn't it? Right? And then they break into this, all right? And this is so obsessive, so pleasurable to listen to. And it's got that element of dance, co contemporary dance music where there are elements coming in and out. There's nothing really changing, but your attention falls on the elements of the arrangement that are changing. Check out. So classical. Classical music. Puccini, what is this? Oh, it's not Puccini. Call. Space. Lab. Response. Elements of good composition. And we are again in this break. It's not even a break, this is like a B section, but it's also what happens at the end because they keep it as an outro for an improvisation. This is the break. It's a clock. It's thinking time for the machines. Break down, build up and drop. Dude! And they're so cool, they don't even need a crash. Yeah, like cool R&B. No crashes on the landing. <laughs> you know, there are so many elements that these guys are confessing to like. Crash symbol, easiest to do. Noise, envelope, tsh, they do it sometimes, but not on this one. It's too serious for crashes, man. Don't bother, you know, just follow the... Bakkatapu, my favorite drum feel. I've talked about it in the past, you know it. A little bit of the variation there. Now they're using sounds that are like closer to horns, you know, with soft attack. Like, when they spoke, <laughs> the subject of disco music, they really spoke, didn't they? Okay. Okay, and now the space lab takes off again and we are exposed to just that clicking noise. Thank you. We may even sample you later on. I mean, what's the point? You can just imitate it, right? Check it. See that hexatonal scale? It's still there because what is it? It is that fast sequence that we're using at the beginning. Check out how fast it is.
Look how slow this is going. Right? And, and, and the clicking is left alone with that effect. Check out. Everything. See that click? I'm going to talk about that click, not just yet, because I think that one of the most interesting uses of the click is what they do on, on so song number six, which is the last of side B, and we're only at side A. <laughs> Let's go. harmonic didn't it check out that filter check out that filter it wasn't any notes that was they were looking for it check out So obviously this is a work of um, either multi-tracking, not sure, I think multi-tracking, it's could have been played by hand. Ah, it went a little bit major there, they overshot it, but good try. If this isn't high energy house from the 90s, I don't know what is. Now, the, the snare drum is clearly a um, white noise. So, with a bit of resonance and a bit of cutoff. So. Da 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 Very simple, romantic strings, I think. to go a third above, I believe, now. Geeking out so much! Probably at this point I've got like 15 people left. Hello, 15 people, I love you. Okay. This is probably their biggest hit here in the UK. Very simple harmony, A minor and E minor. She's a model and she's looking good. I'd like to take her home, that's understood. It's understood. Sure. 
That was a good change. The Okay, and then there is the end. Why are you so good? <laughs> because I am good! <laughs> and here's where I explain their dirty trick to have those stupidly sharp transients. Resonant filter. On the bass, uh, 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 uh. go argue with this chord. <laughs> da, 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 da. Sus resolution. Sus. At the time, a sequencer would have something really basic, like a Z80, maybe. And these processors were very primitive. They weren't very stable. You couldn't get those transients together. So they would take a click to trigger gates that open and close, right? So if I time one machine with a 16-note pulsation, then I can open up and close gates in order to open up and close sounds and that will happen at the speed of light right so the transit will be necessary together let me show you how I do it this click right here okay no I turn the volume down and then I am making sure to send it to a gate yes that's it see this is a gate which right now is bypassed but when you open it you see this? It means that it's following that 16 notes click, all right? So let me show you what my prophet sounds like without it on. And then now... <laughs> you ready?
lower octave. And also there is a flanger on top of the entire sound. And now it's just improvisation. Just chords. Sometimes, you know, not even too precise. All right, and then we are to the last song. This song drove my mom nuts. That's funky, man. Yeah, yeah, that was a chord change. And they do it again. See how much parallel stuff they're doing here. There's a lot of parallel stuff. This is not diatonic classical harmony. And they keep on going, you know, repeat the same interval. Crazy. Break. Shooting in space, like slightly reminiscent of uh, you know video games. Right. Well, we got to the last song, finally! <laughs> I don't know if this is a trip for just myself. I hope you appreciated it. I love you. I'll see you later after you've watched this video. Because this video is behind me. <laughs> Click on it. Come on, you can make it.